And we're back at live in the hall at the GMA annual convention. There's a lot of discussions going on this weekend, some about you know serious policy issues and, and new and different things go, that have happened during the past year. And one of the things that is a big topic of discussion, I know Susan, Susan Moore, our GMA general counsel, is here with me, and she's going to be talking about this um, at the uh, concurrent session and also, I'm sure, with the city attorneys tomorrow morning, is the new open meetings, open records law. And I guess I shouldn't really say it's new. The state has always had, or in recent history, as far as I can remember, government in the sunshine, you know, sunshine laws. But changes were made to this law this year. Was this a massive change, Susan, or how would you characterize this? Could you? I would it? characterize this as a very substantial change in the law. There were some parts that were left untouched, but there were significant changes made, both on the open meetings portion and on the open records portion. It's House Bill 397, mm -hmm. and it was sponsored by Representative Jay Powell. And I know, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion that went into this bill. There was, uh, I know the Attorney General's office was very involved and in, in Sam Owens was very um, interested in this and played, you know, took the lead on this in many ways and invited GMA, ACCG, the Press Association and others to provide input, input along the way. When the bill was first introduced, we were neutral as, it, as we talked about it. By the time the bill passed, GMA was supportive of the legislation. What, overall, why, why would we support that? I mean, what were the things that we like about this bill? Well, the legislation, in my opinion, on whole, is very beneficial for local government officials. It contains some clarification of issues that previously were cloudy and that caused people to doubt whether they could do certain things or whether mm -hmm. they would get in trouble if they did certain things. And now these are issues that have been laid to rest and that have been clearly spelled out. For instance, um, the law very specifically now says that elected officials can travel to training um, and they can like participate they can in here. the training. Right, they can come here to training on open meetings and open records. And if they are in the training and they are not conducting city business, right. then that is okay and it is not a meeting that has to be noticed and for which there have to be minutes and things like that. Um, they can do the training and the traveling to the training. And those are things that were not clear before. Right, and I think, and the, and the key to that though is that no talking about city business. Correct. Don't make it a, a roving city council meeting. Correct. That you is know. what is not allowed. Um, a lot of the changes really recognize that local city officials are ordinary people who do this as a part-time job. They are going mm -hmm. to encounter each other in the course of their ordinary lives. Right. At church, in the community, right. at civic club events. They're going to be together at certain points in time. And as long as they do not discuss city business, at least a quorum of them do not go off in a corner and discuss city business right. while they're supposed to be at church or at a wedding or something, then it's fine. Right. It's a recognition that they will be attending some of the same events. Right. And I think um, part of the the purpose when they when they were looking at clarifying. I mean, and I think that as you as you said is a big part of this is clarifying the law was taking some things that the courts had decided. Right. Taking that case law and incorporating it into the statute so that it is you don't have to go hunt down rabbit holes to figure out. <laughs> Where, where you are. <laughs> right. Um, some of the cases were rolled into the new law or were overruled by the new law okay. um, in some instances. But in any event, that does provide some clarity. There will still be questions and there still will be cases in the right. future. And as we go along, case law will flesh out what does this statute mean. And, and the open records side of, of the law, uh, I noticed in the new publication, we'll talk about that in a second, but that uh, there's a lot of discussion about a records keeper. The right. Rec you know, records who, officer. Yeah, who is that person? And is it, are we saying that cities should? Yes. Should, cities should have somebody designate at least one person. As a records officer. And we do recommend that because the law says that if you designate this person and if you notify the legal organ and put it on your website if you have one mm -hmm. then the three-day limit on the time to respond to a records request doesn't start running until that person receives the request and that's huge because if let's say some you somebody brings an open records request to the the clerk at the fire station right that person may not get it to and that the, person may not be trained in open records and know how to 
appropriately respond right. or where that needs to go. So having that that person who is your public records public officer, public re records officer, to receive those things. But keep in mind that just because that person is out of town, right, it's not a reason for delay. You right. need to have an alternate designated. So like and in the publication, we actually have a sample uh, resolution for you to designate such an officer. That's great. And let's talk about this publication. Um, it's the Open Meetings, Open Records, and Records Retention. Um, publication, which is the records retention side of it, I think is new yes. in this publication. And so it covers the new law, but it it also talks about how long do you, you should keep these or where resources for determining right. how long you need to keep certain documents and what documents should be kept. And yeah, records management is very important because public records are not supposed to be destroyed except pursuant to a records retention schedule. Mm -hmm. And that means that you need to have a complete records management plan. And with the proliferation of electronic records, right. people have many more records than they are probably aware of. Mm -hmm. And they need to get a handle on how to manage these records, how long will they keep these records, when will they get rid of them, and things like that. Perhaps some people think that if they're sending, you know, they, they can avoid open records by using text messages. No, that's a record. Exactly. That is a record, <laughs> yes. And and people are, are told, elected officials, do not text each other or email one another while you're sitting at the dais during a city council is, meeting. Is that, wait, that's wrong? Do not do that. <laughs> so, that's no bueno. Yeah. Well, you know, when I used to work as a reporter, um, the big thing was people, like, writing notes, notes. to each other. Um, let me just share that reporters can read upside down. It's a, <laughs> it's a skill. Um, I guess now with the text and stuff, you can see somebody doing this and somebody else, you know, getting that bing that, hello, you have a new message. <laughs> and they have created records. These are public records that the press can certainly ask for copies of these records. Right, and right. they're entitled to it. And you don't want something that's probably embarrassing that you right. wrote in that message to come out. So if you don't want it out, just don't say it, don't write it, don't do don't it. Don't do it, yeah. right. And if you need to say it, then say it at the meeting or say it after the meeting to someone. Mm -hmm. um, but don't be texting or emailing during the meeting to one another. Right. And this, the um, publication, you're handing this out this weekend, I'm sh sure? Yes, this is um, being handed out with the delegate gifts, so everyone should get a copy. It's also uh, was handed out today in training. I taught open meetings, open records. It's going to be handed out tomorrow for the city attorneys and will be available at the concurrent session on Monday. And I think we're also mailing these to City Hall because I've got a lot of questions from yes. cities saying, you know, when can when will we get this information? And it's on the GMA website. It's going to be on the GMA website as soon as convention ends. It's going on the GMA website. So the city officials will be able to download as many copies as they would like. And as always, when they have a legal question. They should talk to their city attorney first. <laughs> and if you call me, I will ask you, what did your city attorney say? <laughs> so don't call Susan first. That's the wrong call to make. <laughs> yeah, I will rat you out. <laughs> you need to call your city attorney first, get their opinion, and let the city attorney, if they're not sure, call Susan. Thank you. <laughs> great. Well, Susan, thank you so much, and we appreciate the, the great information, and uh, I know there'll be a lot more discussion about open meetings, open records in the next year as people are familiarizing themselves with this the changes to the law. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Thank you. And Aileen, what's going on out there on the exhibit hall floor with some of our vendors?